Hi, I'm Michael from ETS, and welcome to Inside the TOEFL Test. Today, we're going inside the TOEFL IBT writing section, specifically question one, the integrated writing question. So in the next few minutes, we're going to look at how the question is structured, how to approach the question, how your response is scored, we'll look at a sample response that received a high score, and we'll give you some tips for improving your writing skills. So here's generally what question one will look like. For this task, you will first read a passage about a topic. Then you'll listen to a short lecture related to the same topic. And then you will have 20 minutes to type your response at the computer. There is no maximum length for your response, but typically an effective response has between 150 and 225 words. Now let's look more closely at what the integrated writing question is asking you to do. First, you'll see the reading passage, and you'll have three minutes to read it. So as you read, look for the main idea of the passage and take notes about key points that relate to that main idea. You don't need to memorize the passage because it will reappear on your screen when it's time to write. Next, you'll listen to a lecture. The speaker will talk about the same topic from a different perspective for about two minutes. As you listen, you can take notes on your scratch paper. Listen for information that responds to the points in the reading passage. You will only hear the listening passage once, and when it's finished, the reading passage will reappear on your screen, along with the question. And the question will always ask you to summarize the points made in the lecture and explain how they relate to specific points in the reading passage. Now that you understand how the question is presented, here are some strategies for what to do as you prepare and write your response. As we mentioned about the reading passage, it's important to identify the main idea, which is usually in the first paragraph, and see how it's developed. Usually there will be three points that support that main idea. For this passage about computerized voting, the main idea is stated in the first paragraph. It basically says that current voting systems are inaccurate and unreliable and should be replaced by computerized voting systems. You'll find the three supporting points in the next three paragraphs. Computerized voting would reduce the mistakes people make when they vote. It would reduce the mistakes people make when they count the votes. And it isn't any riskier than other widely used electronic transactions, like in banking. In the listening passage, the speaker is going to indicate his or her perspective near the beginning of the lecture, so be sure to listen carefully. In this case, it's clear that the speaker opposes a change to electronic voting. It's doubtful that computerized voting will make the situation any better. Then, when you're taking notes during the listening passage, remember that you're looking for specific points that relate to the points in the reading. These voters can easily cast the wrong vote or be discouraged from voting altogether because of fear of technology. Furthermore, it's true that humans make mistakes when they count up ballots by hand. But are we sure that computers will do a better job? After all, computers are programmed by humans, so human error can show up in mistakes in their programs. And in many voting systems, there is no physical record of the votes, so a computer recount in the case of a suspected error is impossible. As for our trust of computer technology for banking and communications, remember one thing. These systems are used daily, and they are used heavily. But voting happens only once every two years nationally in the United States, and not much more than twice a year in many local areas. This is hardly sufficient for us to develop confidence that computerized voting can be fully trusted. In this example, the speaker makes several points. So after you find those key points in the lecture, you may be able to match up those points with the main points from the reading. Finally, and this may sound obvious, make sure you answer the question. The question will always ask you to summarize the lecture, and it will always ask you how the lecture responds to the points made in the reading passage. So if you only write about what's in the reading passage, you're not answering the question. Before the test, make sure you understand what the raters are looking for and how each question is scored. 
The tasks in the writing section will each be given an overall score from 0 to 5. For question 1, the integrated writing question, raters are looking for three main things. Accurate development, organization, and language use. First, accurate development. The raters are looking for how well you're able to select important information from the lecture, then clearly present it in relation to the relevant information from the reading. Second, organization. This basically means a reader can read your essay from beginning to end without becoming confused. You can help the reader follow your ideas by writing in paragraphs and using good transitions. And avoid redundancy, which is saying the same things over and over, just using different words. The third criterion is language use. Raters are looking for things like sentence structure, word choice, and vocabulary. It's also important that your use of grammar is strong and consistent, though it doesn't have to be perfect to get a top score. Now let's look at a sample response to this same question about computerized voting that received a score of 5 on a 5-point scale. This response is very well organized, and it does a very good job of selecting the important information from the points made in the lecture and explaining how the information relates to each of the claims made in the reading passage. First, it says that many voters are unfamiliar with computers, so some voters may end up not voting at all. And this counters the argument that computerized voting is more user-friendly and prevents the voting results from being distorted. Second, it directly challenges the argument that computerized voting will result in fewer miscounts by saying that computer programming errors could result in even larger miscounts or the loss of voting records. Third, it rejects the idea that computerized voting would be similar to computerized banking by pointing out that the computerized banking is only reliable because it is so frequently used, and that does not apply to voting. So overall, the response is well organized, and it shows the writer really understands how to explain the ways in which one source disagrees with another. There are occasional minor language errors, like some people are not used of computers instead of some people are not used to computers, and making miscounted two words instead of one, but there aren't very many of these kinds of errors, and most important, they don't make the content of the response unclear or inaccurate. So this response would receive the highest score of 5 out of 5. It's a good example of how your response doesn't have to be perfect to get a high score. For more details about scoring this type of question, look at the integrated writing rubrics. Now here are a few tips that can help you improve your writing skills. First, practice paraphrasing, which is expressing the same idea in different ways. Knowing how to paraphrase is important because it gives you more options when you need to respond to a question. And you can practice paraphrasing just about anything, a news article, a television ad, an email from a friend, a poem, basically anything you read or hear. To be able to paraphrase well and to write well, you need to build your vocabulary. It's important to be able to use synonyms of key words when you write. Next, remember how we said it was important to be able to identify main points? You can practice this by listening to recorded lectures and writing down what the main points are. This is a great activity to do with a study partner because you can compare notes. Here's another tip. Read two articles that are on the same topic and write a summary of each. Then explain the ways in which they're similar and the ways that they're different. There are lots of ways to improve your English skills, but whatever you do, keep practicing. And good luck on your TOEFL test.